All right, so I want to go through Daniel chapter 12. And I want to try to make this as simple and easy to understand as possible. Because I'm telling you, there are a lot of people that are twisting what Daniel 12 is saying, what it's talking about. So I'm going to go through it verse by verse and give you something to think about, something to consider, and hopefully make this as easy to understand as possible. It's not rocket science. So let's go. Daniel chapter 12. And at the, that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Now this Michael is the chief angel, the archangel, even Jesus Christ. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time, same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book everybody that's saved all right so essentially there's going to be trouble all right what some people call the great tribulation or what we read about in matthew 24 the great tribulation it's not the wrath of god it's just things are going to get progressively worse that's all verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So, this is the day of the Lord, Judgment Day. This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and judgment is made between who is saved and who is not saved. This is the harvest, right? So, those of us that are saved are lifted up to be with the Lord. And those that are not saved are... Uh, resurrected and um, fire comes down you know it, however you want to look at it fire comes down from heaven and destroys them all I mean they are not giving ever they are not ever at any point given everlasting life all right so many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt all right so whether you want to say they're resurrected or just awakened from their death, however you want to look at it, the unsaved are going to be destroyed. All right, so this is parallel to what we're reading in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. Verse 3, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Talking about the saved people. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, this many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased is leading up to the end of the world. All right, we just got a picture of the end of the world. Now, it's saying, shut the words, seal the book, and this right here is before the end of the world, okay? Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. We're seeing that, aren't we? Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there was stood other two, the one on this, this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river, and one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? This is very similar, or um, you know, nearly exactly what we're seeing in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? All right, same question. All right, we're going to give a very similar answer. And um, it, in my opinion, or in my, you know, my life, uh, that's what I've always wondered. You know, what is the end of the world? You know, once I realized as a teenager, this world is crazy. This world cannot sustain itself. Um, you know, I think it's a question everybody should ask. It, it would, to me, it's insane not to ask that question. 
but uh, you know everybody's growing right so verse 7 and I heard the man clothed in lin linen which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time times and a half and he shall have and when he shall have finished to scatter the power of the holy people all these things shall be finished now think about this okay so the man clothed in linen says it shall be for a time times and a half and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people all these things shall be finished so it'll be the end of the world so he's saying that it shall be for a time times and a half and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people and the power of the holy people is to preach the gospel um, that's the power of the holy people the, all right, so the gospel must first be published among all nations. So this is the power of the holy people. And this is being, we're being instructed to preach to every creature, right? To preach the gospel, the good news to every creature. This is the power of the holy people. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So this is the same thing as what we're reading here. When he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people. Again, the gospel is the, is the power of the holy people. So, see if I can find another verse here. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. So this verse here, where it says, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, that means to preach the gospel to every creature among all nations okay and then uh, we see here uh, you know once this happens let's see if I can find it in this gospel the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come it's parallel it's the same thing it's it's using different words said a different in a different way but it means exactly the same thing thing when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of thy of the holy people all these things shall be finished right, then shall the end come and th that's the question at hand isn't it that what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world or how long shall it be until the end of these wonders so everybody wonders uh, everybody wants to know what's going to be the end of the world all right we're being told here right and verse 8 and I heard but I understood not then said I O oh my Lord what shall be the end of these things so Daniel's basically asking the same question that was already asked verse 9 and he said go thy way Daniel for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. All right, so very simple. You know, I'm just stating the obvious here, okay? So many shall be purified and made white and tried. So that's talking about those of us that are born of God. When we are purified, that that means that Jesus has purified us. It, obviously, we don't purify ourselves, but it's by the blood of Jesus are we made white, all right? And 
Um, so we there there is no condemnation in us, right? There's no sin in us at all. Let's see. Um, just if I could just point out one verse here. I'm not even sure I could find that one verse, could I? Oh, there it is. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. We are purified. We are made white. And we are tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly. The unsaved will continue to be wicked. And none of the wicked people, none of the unsaved will understand. But the wise, which is those of us that are saved, shall understand. Oops. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that makes desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Now, first of all, the daily sacrifice is taken away, or it happened upon the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he died, he put an end of sacrifices. All right? So his sacrifice, his offering for our sin was done away with forever. Um, because he, he finished it. He accomplished it. There's no, you can't have, you know, there's no reason to keep killing the guy. He's already dead. He's already, he's already provided the perfect sacrifice. He that had no sin was made sin for us. So now, the offering of Jesus Christ is final. Alright, it's finished. It's, um, they, there's no, you know, the, I'm really just stating the obvious. You already know this. Okay, so there are no more sacrifices being made on a daily basis like there was before the time of the death of Jesus Christ. Okay, um, I mean, that's there's no disputing that the daily sacrifice was taken away, and now I'm um, here. Let's do it this way. I feel like a lot of people get this wrong and it's so simple. All right. Let's see here. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The daily sacrifice is gone. It's taken away. That happened on the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he made that offering, he offered himself as a sacrifice to cover our sins forever once and for all and the abomin okay so and from the that and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that makes desolate set up so after this has happened the abomination that makes desolate set up is unbelief it is not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, and so we we know this by reading the Gospels how many believed, yet many did not believe, and so the, those in power did not believe, and so they went about their business to, in my opinion, my theory is that they went about their business to create an alternate reality, essentially. Uh, an alternate worldview where Jesus is not the Christ and it still persists today. Now, the thousand two hundred, or I'm sorry, yeah, the, the twelve hundred and ninety days, okay, it's telling you how long it's going to be. It's going to be twelve hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waits and comes to the thirteen hundred and thirty five days. All right, so you, this is very simple. You figure this out. This is 45 days after the 1290 days. All right, it says, Blessed is he that waits and comes to the 1335 days. So 
that simply means that when this comes to an end when this is finished I should say when this is when the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the air and those of us that are saved are lifted up to be with the Lord and those that are not saved are at our feet and they are destroyed forever all right so that's that's what's going to happen after 1290 days and then it says blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand uh, 335 days so that means you made it through the wrath of God that means you have everlasting life now this is written as such that it's really very simple but the unsaved people will not understand it they won't get it but we that are saved it's very it should be very simple that this 1335 days is representative of everlasting life because we made it through the judgment of God we're on the good side the other side of the judgment of God that means we have everlasting life and therefore we got nothing at all to worry about verse 13 but go thy way till the end be for thou shalt rest in the Lord Jesus Christ and shall and stand in thy lot at the end of days so he's saying Daniel hey you got it made you got nothing to worry about you're saved secured sealed forever All right and so also those of us today that are saved that are born of the Spirit of God so also should we have comfort and peace knowing that we are going to be on the right side of the judgment that we are going to endure beyond the 1290 and be there at the 1335 days all right we have everlasting life it's not ours to earn therefore it's not ours to lose and God promises he will never take it away from us therefore once saved we are always saved we have everlasting life we shall never die so we can have peace and without it man there is no peace but we have peace in the Lord Jesus Christ who has secured us sealed us forever all right 